My boss doesn't understand me. This is by far the complaint that I hear the most among young designers and artists. Hi guys, Fabio Palvelli here with another video about the business side of design. And today we're going to talk about how to deal with problems at work. Now, I've thought of this video mainly for people that work in larger creative offices or maybe in corporate companies where there is a design office within it. When people reach out to me asking for some career advice, there are four things that I like to share with them, which I think it is worth remembering at all time when having a full-time job as a creative. The first thing that you should remember is that you need to detach yourself from your job. You need to understand that you and your job are not the same thing. This is you, this is your job, not the same thing. So that your job should not affect your personal life. When you go to work in the morning, you should leave your personal life out of the door. And when you get off work in the evening, your professional life should be left behind. Now, bear in mind that I'm not suggesting to you that you should not care about your job. On the contrary, I think that you should love your job but you should also remind yourself that if you do something wrong or if you do something that maybe needs some rework, that has nothing to do with your persona. This only has to do with your job. Now, you might say, but I'm an artist, I am my job. Oh God, that's, you know, I've been, <laughs> that little bit, I've, I've tried it like 10 times and it never comes out good. As a creative, you are given tasks and if you're a normal person, you will make mistakes, it is inevitable. But you know what, that's okay. You need to understand that those mistakes do not reflect who you are as a person. Those mistakes are what happens at work. And actually, you should consider those as part of your learning process. So try and focus. Our attention span is getting shorter and shorter. We easily get distracted and we need to put a lot of effort in gaining focus in order to be productive. Attention at work, I think it's a very underestimated skill to have. And I hear very little people talking about the importance of paying attention. In fact, myself, I'm a big supporter during work hours of not using social media at all, because the moment that I do get on social media, even only for a second, I often get dragged into this rabbit hole of liking and commenting and reacting that does no good to my work whatsoever. But anyway, that would be actually my second tip. When you're at work, do not use social media. It is distracting, it is useless, and on top of that, it can often get you in trouble. So if you can already grasp these two concepts, these two ideas, this will already make a huge impact on your life and you'll be able to control your emotions a lot better. The third thing that I wanna discuss with you is how to deal with problems. An old boss of mine used to say to me, Tell me the solution, don't tell me the problem. Let me explain what that means. One fundamental thing that I've learned about problems is that problems need to be formulated in a concrete way. And every time that you need to discuss a problem or you need to bring up a problem, you should have a solution ready for that problem. If you do not have a solution to a problem, then yours it's not a problem, it's just a complaint and complaining will not get you far professionally. Usually complaining will get you to gossip with colleagues at work, and when people gossip negatively, the air around you gets sour and you end up poisoning your own working environment. And in my personal career, I've seen a lot of people leaving their jobs simply because they could not put up with the air at work anymore. I cannot remember all the times that people would get in touch to tell me that their boss were the worst. And then when I asked why and what could have been done about it, they could never really give me a straight answer. And look, I get it. Bosses sometimes they're not funny, sometimes they're not understanding, uh, sometimes they might be very unpleasant to deal with. But you know what? In my experience, this comes with the job description of being a boss. And so you got to remind yourself that the reason that they are like that, it has nothing to do with you personally, but it is because their job might require them to be like this. And look, again, I'm really not trying to justify your boss. Maybe your boss really is an ass, and maybe there is nothing that you can do about that. But if the problem that you might have at work 
is that you don't like your boss, for example, because you think he or she is a jerk, then this might be merely a personal issue that you have to deal with yourself. And the bad news is that there might not be a solution to this unless you start detaching yourself and your persona from your job. Because if you do not detach yourself, then things like this will start affecting you on a very personal level. And you can imagine this is no good. I often hear the phrase, people don't leave jobs, they leave their bosses. To reverse engineer this, you need to put yourself in a position where your boss can do you no harm when they say something that might bother you. And you do this by detaching yourself from your job. Now, the fourth thing that I want to talk to you about is taking responsibilities. The bigger responsibilities you can take at work, the more control you can have over the responsibilities that you take. Now, I'm not saying that you should take more responsibilities, I'm saying that you should take bigger responsibilities and there is a huge difference. The problem with the majority of corporate design companies nowadays is that the corporate world trades creativity with methodology. And this is because when you have a bit of a larger organization, you need to have methods in order to guarantee a certain level of productivity and production quality. And so what happens is that a lot of talented artists or designers, they get hired to do a job where their skills are basically wasted. And if you as a professional don't understand this, it can have some personal and psychological consequences on the well-being of people working there because you're going to automatically think that you are not being appreciated and you might be misunderstood. So by trying to take bigger responsibilities, you will be able to take bigger chunks of work and in turn, this will give you more control over the tasks that you have to execute. Now, bear in mind that being able to take more responsibilities is something that will happen over time and it's something that it will require you to have to work twice as hard. In Italy, we say, you wanted the bicycle, now you gotta pedal. <laughs> if you do not have a lot of experience, if you're just starting out, give yourself time. Sometimes it can take years until a person is mature enough to be able to take bigger responsibilities. It's not something that you decide and then it will happen. Trust is gained. And often this means that you'll have to be patient and allow yourself to become the person that your company needs in order to be able to take over bigger responsibilities. But anyway, this is all for this video. You might have other tips or other things to consider in relationship to this topic. Feel free to add them, leave them in the comments. I have to pack tomorrow I'm traveling. So yeah, have a great one guys. And Subscribe if you subscribe, like if you like, don't dislike, okay, you know that. Bye.